my dad was in a wheelchair and he was real famous for helping to make gold ownership legal for U.S. citizens in the U.S. in 1975. It, uh, before that, for like 41 years, people couldn't own gold. Hey, what's up, everybody? Gray Jabesi here, and this is another episode of the Gray Ev podcast. And remember, we are on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and you know all the podcasting platform. If you search, you're gonna find us there as the Gray Ev Podcast. That is the very easiest way for us, uh, for you, to be listening to uh, to the podcast and keep following. So today we have an exciting guest, as usual, and this guest actually has been on the podcast before, but on a different subject matter and was episode number 96 uh, with him and his CTO, but today just himself. So today our guest is Anthem Blanchard, and Anthem is actually an entrepreneur in the cryptocurrency space, uh, or blockchain, whatever you want to call it, and also he has been involved with gold since he was born. So today we talk specifically about gold because Anthem recently launched his uh, gold-backed stablecoin and the gold, which you can find at anthemgold.com. Uh, basically, it's a stablecoin backed by real gold, uh, and you can actually, uh, if you reach a certain capacity of the Anthem Gold tokens, which are called AGLD, you can actually claim the gold and actually own a gold bar. So, this is quite revolutionary in the cryptocurrency space, where a lot of you, uh, or there's still a lot of people that questions. Uh, what actually what what is backed what are these all cryptocurrencies backed by because a lot of people still feel strongly that you know any type of money should be backed by something and I think uh, Anthem Gold is that type of money that is backed by real gold it's insured by Lloyds and also you can verify and see the gold because on their website there is a video feed where you can see all the gold that is uh, backed by the Anthem Gold token. So we talked specifically about that and his history, how he got started. And like some of you know already that Anthem's dad, uh, James U. Blanchard III, was the guy who fought for Americans to privately own gold because it used to be illegal in the 1970s. So we actually touched a little bit into that. Uh, but just to throw it out there as well, I am, I am involved with Anthem Gold and it's one of my proudest moments this year already that uh, we managed to launch and I'm pretty excited that hey, the year, this was a, has been a great year already for me because of the launch of Anthem Gold, something that has been going on for a long time and Anthem specifically has been working on this for like the last six years. So you can imagine the excitement. So I hope you learned something from, uh, from this and uh, as well as from Anthem's uh, wisdom, he has been featured on a lot of media platforms uh, for interview to talk about gold and markets in general. So without wasting too much of your time, enjoy my conversation with Anthem Blanchard and we talk about Anthem Gold. So Anthem, let's start there. I mean, how did you end up in the gold market? Because everybody I've met um, at the conferences, if we speak about gold and that when I, if I mention you, everybody knows you in the gold space almost. Uh, for a lot of people who are in the crypto and gold uh, re related markets. It's an honor. It's, it's an honor. Thanks. Thanks, Gray, again for having me on. And it's a heritage. It's my parents and I was born into it. And really what got them into it was freedom, right? And my dad was in a wheelchair and he was real famous for helping to make gold ownership legal for U.S. citizens in the U.S. in 1975. It, uh, before that, for like 41 years, people couldn't own gold. So my parents built the largest gold business. He passed away 20 years ago. And um, I graduated from college uh, 17 years ago. And my interest really was always about, you know, gold and freedom and really software, you know, because software allows us to be free with our time because it can do a lot of things, remedial kind of tasks, right, that allow us to then do more creative things. So, you know, I look at kind of now the intersection of gold and software as our gold stable coin that we just launched and that, you know, you've been a really big integral part of as our chief visual officer and, you know, awesome team and, you know, culmination of really six years of work in the blockchain space developing. So 
um, you know, we're excited about it. So it's, uh, it's been a long time coming. So if you're in your position, is it expected of you to just, was it expected of you to just be involved in gold, kind of like a responsibility that you have to carry on with the legacy or you also had an initial interest to begin with? You know, my parents had really no pressure on me in terms of the industry. You know, really my dad and mom kind of had expectations of me probably not being in the gold industry, honestly. And um, I, I kind of just found my way into it. You know, I, I, I really just started to appreciate uh, my father's teachings. In 2001, I was in college and that's when the dot-com bust happened. And, you know, really kind of understanding a boom-bust cycle, really kind of experiencing it for the first time. Um, that, that was really interesting for me. And, you know, him passing in 99, um, it really just, you know, made me reflect even more. So, um, just kind of a timing thing. And, um, I was really grateful that, you know, the team at gold money, let me, uh, come on and, and really be part of their startup. They had like $200,000 of gold at the time. And, you know, I got to lead strategy, lead development of marketing, of product, um, of pricing. Uh, client service, AMLs, uh, affiliate program, um, board secretary, um, really just, uh, you know, was really lucky to be in that position. And, and you know, gold money is now publicly traded about $2 billion in assets. So, um, you know, I, I, I've seen, you know, 10,000x kind of growth before. And what I'm excited about is I see, you know, 10,000x just happened again in our stablecoin industry. So, you know, really, we've seen the volumes of stable coins since the beginning of 2017 grow um, from, you know, about $2 million a day from Tether, which is really the first stable coin, to, you know, now upwards of about $20 billion a day. And, and really, like in most days, eclipsing Bitcoin on secondary market volume. So, and we have now several other, you know, fiat stable coins, some of them backed or, or partially backed, um, varying degrees of transparency and insurance. So, it's exciting times. Uh, Stablecoin, I think, is time is now. So the market's telling us that. So you have already uh, kind of got into what I wanted to ask you next, which was, and stable coins are very important at the moment. Uh, so what are we? What are stable coins for folks out there who do not know exactly what what this is? Yeah. So a stable coin, basically, the vocabulary today is a token that's pegged to something that is typically something that is, you know, in a currency, um, something that, you know, is an asset, you know, it, you can really kind of apply it to anything as a security token as well, right? If it's stable to that security. So in our case, we've applied stable coin concept to stable pegged to gold, but also fully backed by gold. So not all stable coins are backed. Like there's a lot like maker, um, you know, tokens that are derivative totally. There's some that are kind of hybrid, maybe like Tether, you could say, um, you know, varying degrees of uh, transparency. So um, we, we've got a, a gold stable coin that's all the gold is vaulted, all the gold is insured, all the gold is in Texas. It's at a data center co-location that's considered a class three vault. And it's all on video. And we use Hercules, which is inventory log, all the gold bars in an indisputable manner such that anybody can take a look. You know, even our greatest competitors can look, challenge the inventory log, and we can prove indisputably to anyone forensically that those bars, those bars entered when they were supposed to, um, when they said they were, that there's a digital audit trail that's indisputable. So um, that, that, that's, that's really the um, specialness. I think of, of, of Anthem Gold, it, what's what really differentiates us, um, you know, the other aspects of it, you know, I, I think are, are, are best, best uh, practices, but what we do above and beyond, I think is really, you know, the video and x-ray and, and really using all that with Hercules together as a package is really what makes us special. So others may, may ask that, okay, so having a gold back cryptocurrency is really a good idea. But one of the questions that I've encountered so far on uh, is that, well, if you just say that it's a cryptocurrency backed by gold, how do people actually ensure that it is actually backed other than just seeing the video? Can they claim the gold and actually own it on their own? Like they claim the gold bullions? 
Exactly, they can. So people can basically stake effectively 1,000 AGLD stable coins and basically take bailment of a bar directly. So we're offered in 174 countries right now, anthemgold.com. So people can literally go buy the gold and then if they want to take delivery, it's a 3% charge. And it's a kilo bar wherever they want, um, you know, as long as we can send it to them, which is pretty much any in the world. So um, it, it's it's in the United States, which is the most private place in the world and has some of the best property protection rights. Um, and, you know, at the, at, at, at the end of the day, it's very, very clear law um, when it comes to owning gold bullion and, um, you know, what, what the rights are there. So um, it's all on video. So that's really, really neat. If they go to anthemgold.com's website, they can see the video. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's, it's an Anthem Bunker product. We actually built a product out of our Genesis company, Anthem Vault Inc., which is a precious metal dealership. But we also got into the vaulting business so we can make sure that we had a class three insured vault that was capable of vaulting you know, millions or ultimately billions of dollars of, uh, of gold. So, so for... Uh, for people who would want to get involved in, in Anthem Gold, um, is this just a cryptocurrency for folks that are into crypto or it's basically just anyone who even just has an uh, interest in buying gold that they can hold the, the tokens themselves, which represent the ownership of gold, that, uh, and they don't have to worry about the voting aspect of it. So if you hold the tokens, that means, you know, you have the gold, but at least you mitigate the risk by having the gold being reserved somewhere, which if you want at some point, you can always claim it, right? Exactly, exactly. You, you got an asset token that's fully backed, fully insured in a Texas vault that you can see on video that you can take claim of if you want. You can, you know, get Bitcoin back for it or Ether back for it. Um, you know, so it, it's all there. And yeah, it's, it, it's a place that you can store your value if you don't want value to track the, the trend volatility of Bitcoin or Ether or the, the general complex of crypto utility tokens. It's a, it's a great place to be when, you, when you're trying to you know, not have 100% of your wealth allocated into utility tokens like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and so on. So this finally gives people an option they can trust that's completely outside of the banking system, right? I mean, they're gold bars, so um, they're, they're bars in a vault and they're insured. So um, the, the, the issues of like cash bailment are non-issues, like you'd have um, the issues of a bank stopping up a wire is a non-issue. Um, so yeah, we're, we're first to market um, to be offered to US citizens. So that's really exciting. Um, and yeah, again, like we, we think that the, the, the time is now uh, for, for gold stable coins. So yeah, we're excited about Anthem Gold and EGLD. And is this um, in any way, uh, why is it not considered a security token? That's one of the questions that I've, uh, I've seen so far. That's a great question. So in the US, the way the law works with precious metals is they're regulated under US Treasury Department under the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network Division. So precious metals kind of sit special away. And so as long as you can uh, achieve delivery to someone within 28 days, effectively, it's not a futures contract. So um, precious metals are, are have kind of their special exemption, primarily because of precious metal dealers. And they're clearly defined in the USA Patriot Act, which is a, a basically part of US Treasury uh, regulated uh, law set that comes from Bank Secrecy Act. And you know, all securities like uh, stocks and bonds um, and any like uh, industrial metal, those are all like clearly under uh, SEC and CFTC guidance, which basically means that in order for you to launch any kind of product that is involving any security, you have to get permission from either the CFTC or SEC, or maybe in some cases both. So um, that's what kind of makes gold a really neat product. Of course, it just happened that we have an incredible legacy and understanding of the product, but it kind of also de facto falls into a neat category um, because of the way that gold itself is regulated. So it makes for a nice beachhead and to uh, becoming an asset token maker. Okay, and uh, is this, um, is Anthem Gold fractional in any measure? Yeah, actually it is. So it goes down to one billionth of uh, one gram of gold. So 
effectively. So each AGLD right now represents one gram of gold. The way that the, the fee structure is derived is um, 10 cents of $100 worth of the gold per every three months quarterly is subtracted from the gold balance basically to pay for the insurance and the storage fee. So it's a pretty usual, you know, it comes out to 40 basis points a year, which is a pretty usual charge um, in the industry for this kind of service, a, a vaulted service. And of course, we have the added utility of the peer to peer functionality. And each AGLD token is divisible, um, you know, down to um, nine decimal places, uh, one billionth. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of those neat features that um, makes it really, really neat for microtransactions. Of course, right now there's the gas cost of Ethereum, but um, which adds, you know, kind of a practical limit to cost. But, you know, we perceive over time, you know, being able to achieve greater cost efficiencies. So you witnessed the, the last, uh, the bubble, the tech bubble in the early 2000s. And now with what's going on in the space or in the world, actually in, in general, there is a speculation that we might have another major uh, economic crash, considering that, you know, the cycle is around that, that moment that things start to happen. Others are speculating even this year. Others stay saying that it won't last two or three years before it happens. Uh, what are your thoughts on that now? And what, are, what can an individual right now do to protect themselves? If they have, say, a little bit of money to protect their family and their, uh, and, and their wealth, what are some of the measures they can take? And also, where does gold historically has been used as? You know, where does it factor in the entire situation? So I think great questions, very pertinent. Um, you know, typically, so we just saw in the U.S. the three-month U.S. Treasury uh, interest rate get higher than the 10-year U.S. Treasury rate, which doesn't make any sense, right? And so the last time that this happened was 2006. And, you know, usually when the first time you see this kind of cross, since it's been like many, many, many years for it to happen previously, it's an indicator of a lack of trust, basically, because banks borrow short to lend long. And when that model breaks, everything breaks. Traditionally, when you see this, you see like the biggest year ever of speculation. And of course, that's what we've seen this year. You know, all these stock markets globally have done very well. And I think that will continue now. I really like uh, crypto here. Obviously, I'm super biased. But, um, you know, look, April 1st was estimated about 100 million of, you know, new um, national currency effectively coming into the crypto markets and that creating essentially $20 billion of kind of a, of an increase in market cap. So, you know, to be able to see that kind of, you know, 200x kind of increase, it, it, it says a lot about tightness in the markets. And I think when you look at credit starting to deteriorate and you have people starting to look to kind of stow away funds, like it's traditionally happened in other credit contractions where people will take out multiple liens on real estate and hide money and things like that. I think you're going to see a lot of those actors end up in crypto. So, um, you know, I think for those that have a little bit of money, I think, you know, putting it and in, in putting it some of it into Bitcoin, BTC is probably a really safe place, relatively speaking, as long as you know how to store it, which I know is something that you cover a lot on, on your um, program, which is amazing and really, really critical to, uh, to holding Bitcoin and storing it safely and the keys safely. And yet yeah, gold traditionally has always been a protection as well. So, you know, like we saw basically 12 years ago, uh, 11 years ago when, you know, credit contraction happened last and gold prices also got affected, but gold prices were the quickest to recover and, and gold mining stocks and, and general equities. So this time around there's crypto. It's a new asset class. Um, I think because it is so small ownership. I mean, it's really a hobby market altogether. I mean, we're just starting to develop basic retail cases like gold stable coins and, you know, no commercial enterprises use any kind of utility protocol in their commercial stack at this point. So, um, you know, we're all, we're in the nascent early days still, which is fun. So we get to kind of help shape the industry still. Right. So for those who would like to get some uh, Anthem Gold tokens or coins, you should definitely go on anthemgold.com and there you, uh, you figure out a way to get it. The website is there, very easy user interface for you to get on some tokens. And this is built on Ethereum, so it's ERC20, correct? 
Yeah, it's an ERC-20 plus, yeah. like latest, latest, they call it ERC-050 standard. And yeah, we're um, really excited. Yeah, anthemgold.com. And if you have any questions or issues, you know, contact us. You know, we're here to serve you. So, um, you know, Discord, we want you to be, um, you know, find joy and have enjoyment in our product. And we want this to be an enjoyable experience for everyone. So uh, please, you know, reach out to us, you know, and, and we will, you know, be incredibly grateful. And um you know, really appreciative. So um, please, you know, reach out to me anytime you'd like to on Twitter. Anthem Hayek uh, is my middle name, H-A-Y-E-K, which is kind of cool because my dad interviewed uh, Frederick Hawkins Hayek about 35 years ago and is on yeah. YouTube. And he actually talks about this concept that we're basically launching. Uh, we did launch <laughs> this last <laughs> week. <anyway. laughs> it's a little surreal. Um, six years, we've been developing in public blockchain. Our team built the first fully gold back crypto Five years ago, Independence Coin that Reuters covered, Financial Times and Business Insider covered a counterparty version that we did, um, you know, about four years ago. So um, three years ago, it's uh, we've been we've been at this for a long time. So um, we're, we're we're just excited. So thank you also, Gray, again for your help. And uh, yeah, and anyone wants to learn anything else more, please you know check out the website and you know reach out to us. So our, we have uh, uh, you know various Telegram chats, uh, Discord channel so um yeah just reach out and lastly what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind one day well a, you know legacy of increasing freedom of wealth movement because yeah. that's really what helps keep us all from being free people and never to be enslaved that as long as we can work for ourselves or work for somebody else and it's a choice and not a requirement then, you know, we can, everyone will, people will remain free as individuals. And so I think if we can, if I can have a legacy of helping to, you know, keep pushing the, the movement of human freedom and, you know, really focusing on the freedom of wealth movement to help keep people free. Um, you know, we see places like Venezuela, um, this being the most recent example, but I mean, there's just, you know, currency crises and hyperinflations and, just banking issues are, you know, all throughout history. And it seems like every year, you know, right, we hear about the latest ones. So um, like there's about, about 200 countries almost in the world, like 195 ish. So, um, you know, it's, it's just here to protect the people in kind of the bottom places of, of, of currency, um, you know, hierarchy, so to speak. So we want to give them an option that's, you know, as good as gold, right? Literally. Yeah. So, and as transferable as a Bitcoin. So, um, you know, that, that's the idea with, with that kind of staying power from a store of value, that gold. So, yeah, we're excited. Thank you. So it's a grateful. Great. Grateful I, I like what you said about uh, that work, work should be more of a choice other than uh, some sort of a requirement where, you know, it takes away the freedom from people. And, yeah. and you're, you're also pretty um, outspoken and, you know, you, you're very in touch with what's going on in the world in a lot of ways. Uh, what, what is your generic view of what's happening in, in the world right now? It's a transitioning. I think, you know, we're, it's, we've been in a digital world for, you know, decades now, but the way that we still do business is in the old world. And mm. that is really starting to break down faster and like really like, this so much faster than I can even explain. I mean, it just seems like a year today goes by a hundred times faster than a year did 10 years ago. And, you know, now the demands are just extreme because younger generations are now in positions of control, in positions of authority. And they're realizing that like the existing marketplaces aren't, aren't set up to scale the way that they need to scale their operations. And I think in the next 10 years, we're going to see, the proliferation of public blockchain protocols, utility tokens, asset tokens, stable coins, all everything transitioning into supply chain, warehousing, IoT, into commercial usage, right? The first 10 years of this industry has really been no commercial usage. It's all been speculation, which is incredible because the market cap is about $200 billion on pure speculation, which is amazing. And that, that, should, that should be the best indicator to anybody that this, industry, this is an industry and it's here to stay. Um, and I think this next 10 years will be the development of public blockchain, you know, crypto, whatever you want to call it, um, in, in, into uh, a real industry. 
Awesome. Uh, Anthem, continue what you're doing. I appreciate you for, for being on the show and talking about gold and freedom. Um, for everyone out there who want to get Anthem Gold, you already know where to get it. And he, Anthem, is also on Twitter uh, at Anthem Hayek, A-N-T-H-E-M-H-A-Y-E-K, correct? That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, have a nice day further. Thank you, Gray. Likewise. Appreciate yes. it. Bye. This is always Hello once again, and that was the end of our conversation. And just before you go, just want to communicate a few things with you uh, quickly. If you have uh, enjoyed any of the podcast or this specific podcast episode, I would appreciate it if you share it with your friends and family through your social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc., etc., as well as write me a five star review on iTunes or Apple Podcast app. That would be fantastic. It helps me flourish and sustain this podcast as well. Uh, we also on other platforms like SoundCloud, uh, Stitcher Radio, um, and all other major podcast platforms. So whichever way you're listening to it, I would appreciate it if you leave me a review. You can also subscribe to the Grey Podcast through my website, greyjabesi.com, G-R-E-Y-J-A-B-E-S-I.com. There you also find some of the blogs that I'm writing sometimes and you get notified as soon as the new episode has been published until next time enjoy and be productive